naturalists. Happy Thursday. Today, I'm going to take you back to a place we visited many times before in these videos, and I'm actually going to collect something to bring home and observe. But instead of telling you, we are going to play a virtual game of noses. Now, this is a super simple, fun guessing game that you can play at home. All you have to do is have someone give five clues about an animal and the guessers, all they do is touch their nose when they think they know the animal you're talking about. So you might be tempted to raise your hand and say, oh, oh, oh me, 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 I know, I know. But all you do is touch your nose. So I'm going to give you five clues. And if you're watching this from home, after each clue, touch your nose if you think you know the animal and take your finger off your nose if you're not sure. So number one, this animal hibernates in the wintertime. Remember, touch your nose if you think you know. Clue number two, this animal has kind of slimy skin. Touch that nose if you think you know. Clue number three, this animal has a dark mask by its eyes. Clue number, whoo, clue number four, uh, this animal is one of the first of its kind of animals to wake up in the springtime. Touch your nose if you think you know. And clue number five, this animal sounds like a duck when it makes its spring call. Do you think you know who I'm talking about? It's our wood frogs. Before we do that, let's quickly sing our good morning song. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear resting stone. And the beasts on the run. Good morning, dear flowers and the birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Awesome possum naturalists. Now I'm going to get ready to head to the pond, but I loved getting a little movement in before I went yesterday. So I'm going to do the same today. I hope you join me. I'm going to practice some frog hops in my yard to get ready and prepared for our froggy day. So join me in some frogs. All right, these are super simple. Get down nice and low. All right, naturalists, let's head to the pond. Guess what? There's tadpoles everywhere. I did one quick scoop of the bucket and caught a whole bunch of wood frog tadpoles. Let's take a peek. Can you see all those wood frog tadpoles in there? Oh my goodness, so cool. So that's some phenology for you. Remember, phenology is the study of seasonal changes in nature. So we can now say that some wood frogs hatched on April 23rd. There's something to log in our nature notebooks. Now, I found another super cool critter in our little scoop of the bucket. This is a Helgramite. So this is the larval stage of a Dobson fly. So this kind of crazy looking critter was just swimming in the water when I did my scoop and I accidentally scooped it up. But it's really a fantastic opportunity to see these cool critters up close. They're really big. They have so many legs. They have this little pincer type head. Oh, so cool. All right, naturalists, so I'm back home after finding all of those wood frog tadpoles and I'm going to add them to the observation tank that I already have going at home. 
Now, I do have one wood frog egg mass in this container, and my guess is that my wood frog egg mass hasn't hatched yet because of temperature. So wood frogs rely on temperature to tell them when to hatch out of their egg mass, and the pond gets much more sun than my yard. So my guess is it feels a little warmer up there than it does down here, but hopefully, fingers crossed, my egg mass will hatch soon. Let's add these tadpoles to the observation tank and we'll get to see them develop. So here are our tadpoles, and then this is my observation tank. So it's just a big Rubbermaid container filled with pond water, pond plants, pond silt, pond sand. And then you can see I have just one egg mass in here and it's starting to turn a little green because that is the food that the egg mass or the, the tadpoles kind of consume through their egg mass. So I leave this just on my porch. There's Charlie observing closely. And it gets rainwater, it gets sun, it gets everything that it would get in a normal vernal pool. So let's go ahead and add our tadpoles. I'm gonna try to do this really gently. So it's still pretty murky, but I see one little tadpole swimming around right over here. Oh, yep, Charlie wants to check it out too. So, Charlie, out. So, I'll just keep an eye on these egg masses and these tadpoles, and hopefully I'll get to see some wood frog development right here on my porch. Observing eggs and egg masses and tadpoles up close is such a great way to learn about frogs and to learn about your nature neighborhood. So, if you can, try and bring some tadpoles or an egg mass home to observe. If you can't, try to just regularly visit your neighborhood frogs and see what's going on. Now, I'm gonna keep those egg masses and those tadpoles safe on my porch. And some people say that you can feed tadpoles, boiled lettuce and things like that. I'm actually just going to get fresh water almost every single day and replenish the little invertebrates and plant pieces that are in my water to make natural food for those wood frogs. So I'm super excited to have some little wood frog babies to observe, and I hope that you're seeing some at home too. All right, naturalists, I'll see you next time. Stay curious out there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bye, everybody.